Right, hello, so I'm going to show you how the sum of absolute differences trigger works in the Chip Whisperer system. So here we have the, the setup. So I've already just run an example script to give me this waveform. And one of the first things I'm going to do is initially I had a offset here. So I actually only care about samples from 1500 onward. Um, so that point. So I'm going to get rid of that. And you can see that that 1500 is basically right this section in here. Um, and then we're going to scroll on the scope settings tab all the way down. So with the chip whisper, we now have this sum of absolute difference trigger module. So you have to select a reference that'll be, this is the analog pattern we're trying to match. So it'll just pull it from one of these traces. Um, and it's always 128 samples long. You can't change that. So what we want is we want to select an area that is fairly constant. So for example, this is pretty good as I'm doing different, um, runs and by different runs I mean you know it's sending different plain text that looks like a pretty constant area if I for example were to select here um, you can see that it's changing a lot but we'll, we'll measure that to confirm our suspicions are right it's also right about the 1500 point so this is right about where the encryption starts is the ending so remember it's going to read in 128 samples and if those samples match it'll then trigger so the trigger will be from this side onward um, you can, of course, remember you can use a trigger offset, so you can have a negative trigger, which is to say it's pre-buffering some things, um, or a positive trigger, and this works just as well with the, the sum of absolute differences. So once we have the area, we hit this set reference from current trace. So this copies that trace information to the trigger module itself. Um, we haven't actually changed the trigger, so I can still keep running, and it's not triggering, um, it's still triggering based on the old system, which is the IO line. But what you do notice is we have this sad reference versus cursor. And what this is telling us is it's saying what is the sad criteria based on every new trace. So this is comparing the just captured trace with that reference that's also been downloaded to the device. Um, so what you see, for example, is that if I'm at the right spot, um, the sum of absolute differences is very small. Here we're having like 300. Um, the, the sum of absolute difference, by the way, so it's using the unscaled ADC samples, which range from 0 to 1024, it's 10 bit ADC. And if you change, for example, you can say, well, if I move just one sample off where it should be, we see that the sum of absolute differences is huge. So this is really good. So this means that nowhere else in the trace is it coming close to matching that, uh, that pattern, except just that one spot that was, you know, just right. So where was it? It was somewhere in here. I think it was about 41. And you can see that when I get to 41, bam, it goes way down. So, so this is really good. So now we'll set our threshold. So whenever the output of the sum of absolute different module falls below about 500, let's trigger the system. So the final step we have to do is we actually select the trigger source. So right now it's still using the, the out, this, these trigger pins. So we, tell it to do the sad match and we make sure it's set to rising edge. The output of the sad trigger basically generates a rising edge event. Um, we still need to set it to rising edge. If you set this, leave this at low, for example, uh, it won't actually trigger on the, the sad match. So that's just sort of a little note. So now when I hit play, all of a sudden we see the, the triggers moved and it's actually triggering it entirely based on the analog waveform. Um, and you can see it's just about where I said it would be. So it, uh, let me switch back to the basic trigger. So if I switch back to the basic, we can see the sad trigger was right about here. And this pattern right here, you see at the beginning now. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's quite an amazing system and you're, you're triggering right on the analog data. Um, so you need absolutely no external trigger line and you can, you can trigger based on what the device itself is doing. Uh, of course, so in this case, because there's no negative offset, it did not record the data that caused the trigger. Um, so after it's read in 128 samples, it sees those samples matched, and that takes about five additional samples. So there, there's a tiny bit of offset. It then records the rest of the data. Um, so we don't see that sad system at all. If you wanted, you could, of course, add. So for example, let's add a bit of pre-trigger samples, so I don't know, say 200. 
Um, so now we see that that pattern that you sort of probably recognize. Um, of course, the point range is sort of over here. You can't even really see it. So let's move it in here. Um, but if you move this along somewhere, you'll figure out where the, the new sad reference is. So uh, it's not quite the same, but you get the general the general idea of this. So it's a, it's quite a powerful system. You can play around with it a little more. Um, so this requires the FPGA in 0.03 release or higher chip whisper. Thanks for watching.